It's Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com, where we instantly improve the lives for families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can make informed decisions, have peace of mind, real power, real control, and so that you can influence decision-making fast, even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. In the last blog, I talked about part one of the nine myths of being a critically ill patient in intensive care revealed. You can check out the last week's blog by clicking on the link below this video. In this week's blog, I want to share part two with you of the nine myths of being a critically ill patient in intensive care revealed. So, Last week, we went through the first four myths of being a critically ill patient in intensive care. And today, I want to share the remaining five myths with you. So, let's look at myth number five. One of the myths for families in intensive care is that visiting hours are limited in most intensive care units. And the staff usually try and send family members outside when they do procedures or hands-on nursing care like washing or turning. Now, what you need to know is that intensive care units have gone a long way in the last 10 to 15 years when it comes to visiting hours and the time allowed at the bedside for your critically ill loved one. Whilst during the 1990s there was still a restricted mindset or paradigm about visiting hours, it has changed in many units now where there are often no or very limited restrictions during the daytime at least. And rightly so. In this day and age, the consumer should be the focus and intensive care units should operate from a point of view that they have nothing to hide and they should operate from a customer service mindset. This is a critical mindset to adopt because your high expectations of care and treatment being provided, including having access to your critically ill loved one, are very important. You should expect and you deserve the best only period. Don't lower your expectations because 99% of families of critically ill patients in intensive care are intimidated by the intensive care team and therefore have low expectations. In order to get what you want, you need to have high self-esteem. If you feel like you are not getting enough visiting time with your critically ill loved one, you should talk to the doctors and the nurses in intensive care. And don't be afraid to speak up. Some doctors or nurses also don't feel overly comfortable having relatives at the bedside when they do the ward round or when they perform medical or nursing procedures. If that's the case, your alarm bells need to start ringing and you immediately need to start asking, does the intensive care team have anything to hide? Just by you asking this question to the doctors and the nurses will show them that you are not a pushover and that you are not like 99% of the families of critically ill patients in intensive care. It shows them that you are different and that you are not intimidated by their perceived power and their perceived authority. Again, in this day and age, the 21st century, where transparency should be paramount, you should ask yourself of whether the intensive care team has anything to hide from you. Some doctors and nurses do feel comfortable having family at the bedside whenever they are performing tasks. In some intensive care units, the nursing staff might even get the family involved in the nursing care if the family wants to engage in such activities. In any case, should you feel like you are not getting enough time with your loved one, you should ask and you shouldn't be hesitant to ask for more time if you feel like you aren't getting enough. Furthermore, the more you engage with the intensive care team, the more insight you get about what is really happening. You can also check out an article and a video that I wrote about this topic, what are normal visiting hours in intensive care? And I'll put a link below this video in the written version of this blog. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, click on the link below this video. That'll get you to our website where you have access to all the other resources. Myth number six, children are not allowed in intensive care. Once again, everything is negotiable. You really need to come from that mindset. 
If you feel like your child or your children should come to intensive care to see your loved one, and if you feel like your loved one wants to see their children or grandchildren or nieces or nephews, you should go for it. Of course, you should check with your child or your children and with the intensive care staff as well. In case your children don't want to go, you shouldn't force them either. Furthermore, make sure that your child or your children are healthy as there are a fair number of unhealthy bugs flying around in intensive care. And if your child is in good health, it shouldn't be a problem for them to visit. Most children tend to be very good and understanding when it comes to one of their loved ones being sick in intensive care. Children are smart and can often cope with changing circumstances. You'd be surprised. The worst thing that you can do is to withhold any crucial information from your children and not tell them the truth. Whilst you may want to go slow and at your children's pace in revealing the truth about a significant family member being critically ill or even dying, I have seen over the years and after working with thousands of critically ill patients and their families that not including your children in what's happening with your critically ill loved one can have devastating consequences for your relationships and the trust you build with your children long term. I have seen too many parents in particular trying to hide the fact that their mother or father or grandparents were actually approaching the end of life in intensive care until they had no other choice but to tell them. This is not a, not a good strategy and not a way to build trust. If you think your child can't cope with the news, get professional help from a counsellor or consultant in how to breach the news. Do not withhold any information from your children. They are entitled to know and help them to cope with the situation. You'll be surprised how resilient they are and how they adapt to change. If you break bad news too late, your kids will most likely say something along the lines of, Mummy or Daddy, why didn't you tell me? You don't want to come in such a position, ever. It's okay to be vulnerable with your children. Here's also a quick real-world example so that you can understand what I'm talking about. A while back, I was looking after a 45-year-old man who was dying after a cardiac arrest in intensive care. He had two young children, a nine-year-old son and a five-year-old daughter. Their mother and the patient's wife told their children that their dad was on a business trip for a few days and that he would be back soon. The wife and the rest of the family very much were in denial of the situation and the wife thought her husband would survive and everything would be fine. Nothing was further from the truth. Her husband was in a real end-of-life situation. When she finally had no other choice but to break the news to her children that their father was dying, this traumatized the children, as you can imagine. Unfortunately, this is not an isolated case, and I have witnessed many similar situations where parents withheld and excluded their children from the truth. No matter how difficult the situation, honesty is the best policy with your children in those situations. Myth number seven, doctors and nurses working in intensive care must be of higher status than you are and they must be quote unquote smart. As you know, I have said this one before in some of my other videos, if you have watched them or read some of my blog posts. So I admit that I'm repeating myself here, but why do I keep repeating myself? Well, I keep repeating myself because I wanna help you and also because I see this behavior in intensive care over and over again, and it's holding you and your family back. And it doesn't give you what you want and what you need, which is making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power, and influence. The minute you think the people in intensive care, mainly the doctors and the nurses that you are dealing with, are of higher status or smarter than you are, you are giving away your power and you are handing over whatever level of control you thought you've had. You've just given it away, hand delivered on a silver platter. It doesn't matter where in life you have come from and where in life you're going to. Just because the people you are dealing with happen to be doctors and nurses in intensive care doesn't make them smarter or of higher status. It is your perception 
and your perception only that puts them on a pedestal. And it's your perception that makes them look smarter in your eyes. It's not even real and you are harming yourself if you continue doing that. I'm not saying you should be disrespectful towards doctors and nurses, but you should certainly be thinking about how you view them and you should also not look at them as being smarter than you are or that they are of higher status than you are. Also, if you want more information about that, read my Instant Impact Report again. And if you haven't done so, go and check it out. Again, I put a link below this video where you can check it out. There is even more about this topic, but for now, just remember, do not put doctors and nurses on a pedestal and do not think they are smarter than you are because chances are they're not. Your positive mindset and you having high self-esteem is critical and it doesn't even finish there. Your body language, your tone of voice and you staying composed and determined are all critical aspects. If you want to make informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence. Myth number eight. Because your loved one is mechanically ventilated means that they are very unwell and it's therefore likely that they will die. If I had a dollar for every inquiry we get along the lines of, my loved one is in intensive care on a ventilator and in an induced coma, will he or she make it? I know that when you walk into the intensive care unit and you see your critically ill loved one for the first time, connected to a bedside monitor and connected to a ventilator, you probably swallow. You don't like the look of it. Your loved one looks very different to what they looked like before. And you think to yourself, what are the chances of my loved one surviving this? As I pointed out in myth number one, the vast majority of patients in intensive care are leaving intensive care alive. Let me say this again because it's so important to understand. The vast majority of critically ill patients in intensive care will survive their stay in ICU and leave intensive care alive. But also the answer to the question, what are the chances of my loved one surviving this, is not a black and white yes or no answer. It really all depends. There are so many variables and so many nuances when your loved one is critically ill in intensive care that it takes someone like myself to look at the situation from many different angles, including knowing all the diagnostics, x-rays, blood results, medications your loved one is getting, etc. in order to get to the most pressing answer of this question. I know just by you looking at all the cables, wires and tubes everywhere, especially if your loved one is connected to a ventilator or respirator and the tube is coming out of your critically ill loved one's nose or mouth, it's usually not a very nice look or feel. A lot of relatives and families panic when they first see their critically ill loved one in this particular condition. And they often associate ventilators, cables, equipment, tubes, induced coma with serious life-threatening issues for your critically ill loved one. And in many cases, that's well be the case, as in some instances, your critically ill loved one well may be in, life, in a life-threatening situation. But for the majority of ventilated patients in intensive care, it's a short-term measure, and the average time of being ventilated is usually around two days or 48 hours. That means on average, a patient doesn't stay on a ventilator or on a respirator for much longer than, than 48 hours. It's very often a short-term measure post-surgery or post-admission to intensive care for loss of consciousness. So, just because your critically ill loved one is currently on a ventilator or respirator and in an induced coma, the chances are that he or she will be off ventilation and respiration very soon. And therefore, there is no need to think that just because your loved one is currently ventilated that they are about to die. Once again, ask the doctors and the nurses and you will find ways they will answer your questions regarding the ventilation and the induced coma of your loved one. If you do happen to be a family member who has a critically ill loved one in intensive care, 
who has been ventilated for more than seven days and also has a tracheostomy, things are different. And we have more free reports and articles and videos and blog posts about long-term ventilation with tracheostomy. And again, I'll put some links to resources when to do a tracheostomy below this video in the written version of this blog where you find four or five links to other articles and videos when to do a tracheostomy. Also, keep in mind that more and more countries have intensive home care services available for long-term ventilated adults and children with tracheostomies as a genuine alternative to a long-term stay in intensive care. Check out Intensive Care at Home for more information. Myth number nine. The doctors and nurses have told me that I can't stay overnight with my critically ill loved one in intensive care. As I have touched on in myth number five, intensive care units have become more tolerant in the last 10 to 15 years about their visiting times and their visiting hours. After all, intensive care is not a prison. The general consensus in most intensive care units is that family members shouldn't be encouraged to stay overnight for a number of reasons. Please keep in mind that most intensive care units are busy, noisy and stressful places that run 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days per year. In order to maximize quiet times and rest periods for patients, especially overnight, less visitors are usually a good thing to maintain those quiet periods. There are, however, periods where critically ill patients in intensive care are in dire, difficult and unique circumstances, circumstances such as they have been admitted to intensive care in the middle of the night, or they are extremely unstable and critical and the prognosis of their survival is poor and therefore it is unknown and uncertain whether the patient is going to survive or the patient is approaching the end of life. Those are the three most common scenarios where families of critically ill patients are usually allowed and even encouraged to come and visit even overnight. Furthermore, I have also seen families staying overnight regardless of the rest and quiet period just because they wanted to be with their loved one during times of crisis. Most hospitals usually do not encourage overnight stays, but at the end of the day, if you feel like you want to be there, you should make your wishes known and proceed accordingly. I really hope that you and your family are on your way to control, power and influence, as well as making informed decisions whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. I really hope this video has served you well, and I hope that it answered most of your questions already. For more information on a variety of topics within intensive care, check out our reports and ebooks. So, how can you become the best advocate for your critically ill loved one, make informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power, and influence quickly whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care? You get to that all important feeling of making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence when you download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report, you learn quickly how to make informed decisions, get peace of mind, real power and real control and how you can influence decision-making fast whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Your free instant impact report gives you in-depth insight that you must know whilst your loved one is critically ill or is even dying in intensive care. Sign up and download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report, you learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In your free report, you will also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions, discover 
the many competing interests in intensive care and how your critically ill loved one's treatment may depend on those competing interests. How to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability even if your loved one is dying. You get five mind-blowing tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence in your situation. You'll get real-world examples that you can easily adapt to your and your critically ill loved one situation. How to stop being intimidated by the intensive care team and how you will be seen as equals. You'll get crucial behind the scenes insight so that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care and how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care and it's not what you think. Thank you for tuning into this week's blog and I'll see you again next week in another update. Make sure you also check out our Your Questions Answered section where I answer your questions or simply send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. Or you can call me, find international phone numbers on our contacts tab. Also, check out our ebook section where you get more ebooks, videos, and audio recordings, and where you can also get one on one counseling with me via Skype over the phone and via email by clicking on the counseling and consulting tabs on the top of the website. This is Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com. And I'll see you again next week in another update.